Uh, listen. Yeah, we gotta talk about the party. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But before we get into it, let's just let's just um, you know I think that there's like a you know we got a Bal- Balenciaga teddy bear. We got Kanye West, Nick Fuentes, Yoni Eggs. Somewhere in the middle, Nick Fuentes. Yeah. Huh? He's okay. Nick Fuentes. <laughs> But is, I don't know, like, you don't I know. live under a rock low key, <laughs> unless it has to do with basketball, bro. <laughs> basketball and, like... <laughs> You're lucky. You don't know what's going on? You know, you know Kanye, um, you know he said some weird shit recently? No? Okay. Well, no, I saw the yay shit, but, like, I honestly check out. Yeah. Oh, wait. I, like, it's just, like, nigga. Yeah. I had, you know what's funny is that I remember... I was talking to some, I don't know, who, I don't know what camp it was. But I was, I was shooting a music video and we were just talking about music. This is like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, yeah, but what's up with Kanye West? And they're like, man, fuck that weirdo. And I'm like, <laughs> and at the time I, it was a wild thing to say. Cause it's like, no one had been, at the exp- time it was, yeah, it was kind it was like, he yeah, was tight. Yes. And no one had been exposed to his inner monologue yet. And now that we're all exposed to it, it's like, it's very weird. Some weird shit going on. Right. Right. Jason, some weird shit. Yeah. Like- n- Nick Fuentes is, um, I think Kanye, I mean, I'll just give you the, the cliff notes since you're just unaware of the media that's happening. Kanye just keeps doubling down on shit. And so now he has, uh, he's approached Trump to be his running mate. And then in his camp is Milo Yiannopoulos, whatever the fuck his name is, and Nick Fuentes. Two, N- Milo is a, is a gay right wing provocateur. Yeah, P- queen. Yes. And, and Nick Fuentes is just like, uh he's just like a fucking like a nazi yeah he's like a white nationalist and he rolled with them to okay, florida wait. so you're telling me that a black man yes a gay what was the term provocateur provocateur yeah. and oh, is he a, british and a nazi right it's like the setup of like the best joke ever. The best joke. All go to a Florida. A black guy, a Nazi, and a gay guy walk into a bar. Right. <laughs> walk into a bar to meet Donald Trump, which is that was definitely a setup on The Simpsons for sure. At some point, whatever. It's all it's all chaotic. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, but Sadie Hawkins was delightful. It was great, and and I'm curious because I spend the first three hours of that event just like stressing stre- getting people like it's not the only stress at that point is can you get someone in past like the throng you know and and like you know there's just it's just every year the same thing happens where the event is planned we have the meetings we have the pre-production meeting we tell we have like 30 scares we go listen and we go it's gonna be crazy and they go well we've done you know we did and rolling they, loud we're like no no you don't get it it's a different crazy <laughs> it's a different crazy yeah yeah the i mean dude do you remember i think it was two years ago where the fe- they broke the fence at the roosevelt mm. were you there for that oh no that yeah i was I that was, was amazing i was watching it and i was like this is about to get kind of crazy and i backed up and then everybody was like push that and was i'm on f- the other side of the gate so i felt like i was the one like the guard that saw the zombies fall you know yeah. you're just like oh it's about to go down like this is it that was the first roosevelt who did it for two years and i remember because i was like because there's all these barricades it was on it was on hollywood boulevard and they were pushing and I'm like, and I'm right there and I'm like, what are y'all doing? Like, it, it's not that serious. Like you, you're going to get in at some point, but also if you don't get in, go home and watch Netflix. Like, but they, and then, and when they started, they started rushing through, I literally was trying to talk and being like, what? I was like, what are you doing? What's you happening? Realize everyone in LA, I don't know, being from here makes us a little different. I think it's just yeah. like, we feel, you know, home court advantage, but people not from LA when they get to LA all of a sudden think they're everybody's VIP. Yes. So everybody's more important than the next person and for some reason you get to a party and everybody's like why am I not in already? And it's yeah. like if you don't wait your fucking turn Mr. Ticket like yeah. get the fuck like bro. Yeah. And for me there's like you know events that I get to that I'm supposed to be at whether I'm DJing or just there to show up or this or that. And even if they're like being a dick to me at the door I'll just stay in there. I, you know, my ego is fucking dead. It's okay. I'll be chilling. Yeah. And then when somebody realizes that they fucked up, that's when it's the best moment to be like, "Oh, it's okay. You don't worry. Say yeah. sorry won't help now." Yeah. It's yeah. going to be all right. But yeah, yeah this is the guy that's going to yeah. I've had you. that happen at the at my own party where I'm like, "Hey, uh, can you?" And they're like, "Excuse me." I'm like, "No, no, no. <laughs> You're check is, signed by me, dude." Yeah, Relax. like this is uh, this is this is like I'm half of this party. Like, you understand that, right? And they're like <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I had to sneak. I was sneaking people through the back. I went to sneak in some people through the back, right, to get around the line. 
to get into the main part. And then, of course, other people I know see me with a group and then they, they, they glom onto the group. Everybody all of a sudden, dude, it happens to me every year. Right? You're walking in, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, good, shakes your hand. And then all of a sudden they're like holding your jacket and you're like, okay, my dude. Like, Yeah. <laughs> you turn around, there's just like a squad. <laughs> you're like, who's that guy? It's like some fucking accountant, you know? Like, And we go around the back and I'm getting in these people. I'm getting in my girlfriend and her friends. I'm getting in this, this other dude and his friends. And I was accounting for 20 people. There's 60 people there now. Mm-hmm. And and I start seeing, okay, yeah, get, let him in. And I'm starting to let people in. And then security guards getting mad at me. And they're like, you can't do this. We have to metal detector. And at some point, someone goes, well, I'm with I'm with Matisse. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You're with someone who's with someone. You know, like, with you're, someone. Yeah, like, it doesn't, like, relax. I'm like, go around the front. You'll get in. And, like, everyone got in. It was all good. And people are people like, the urgency to get in that party is as if you're giving away like you know Free gold money. bars. Yeah, there's gold bars inside. There's a new career, or 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 if you don't get in, the outside is going to turn to lava. That's the vibe, right? Yeah, I think for me now, knowing that no matter what, I'll be okay. Like regardless yeah. of how hectic it is in the moment, like dude, I'll figure it out. I'm not yeah. an idiot. Um, I just, just play the pace. In the, you're in the river. You're oh, just, I let them just flow. Like, I let the shit flow. I'll just sit there in the middle, rock back and forth, and then I'll be fine. Yeah. But the best thing is when you get to the bar. Yeah. That's where everything changes because yeah. that's where people act like children. It's like when you get off an airplane, everybody's like in a rush out of nowhere. It's like the door is not even open, sir. But right. By all means. But right. everybody's like pushing, shoving. There's like girls in front, and dudes are like, get the fuck out the way. You're like, <laughs> Dude, it's a drink, bro. It's going to be there. It's, it's gonna alcohol. Be there. You yeah. still got to pay for it. Yeah. Especially that night, you really had to pay for the drinks. I it was one that. of the, every, you know, depending on what the sponsors want to do. Like but sometimes see, you the pay. thing is, is you, the, the open bar situation really is dangerous. It is dangerous. That's what I've learned more than anything. It's yes. like, you could, you know, that, at that night you could afford to do whatever the fuck you want. But when a nigga's making decisions based on his pockets and he's like, yeah, this drink is, this is $60 worth of alcohol. Maybe I won't drink that right now. Right. That's when everybody starts to be calm or, or you know, play at a pace. But when everybody can just drink and drink, dude. Well, it activates something in your mind. Like I, I was, I talked about this a few episodes of where I went to, because I don't drink, but I do partake in other things. Not, not, not drugs. I'll explain what I partake in. I went to a thing where it was a screening for a movie that my friends were throwing and they had four tables of every candy from like the it was just the entire candy <laughs> from gelson's the whole candy aisle and i come in there and i'm like of course i can buy any candy i want listen guys i can buy all the candy i want so you, <laughs> I, can get I, can get, I get like pallets of snickers delivered here on a daily basis um <laughs> and i start freaking out like oh my god like i got i haven't had a hundred grand in so long and like and you start you get into this like um you get in this like it's like it's like it's like a survival depression era breadline mode where you're like i got it so in the open bar it's the same thing double all fist. of a sudden people are like i need more yeah you need more and not only do i need more i need to indulge so hard yeah. that i won't remember that i indulged yeah and for me as somebody who drinks rarely it's like i don't like to be drunk drunk like wasted that shit is like over with at this age i'm 28 yeah. and i feel like a, a, you know i've been going out in la since i was 16 years old so yeah I feel dated. That's regardless. the absolute cap is 28. After 28, there's no more puking. I mean, 30 is the absolute, absolute, but 28 is when you should hang it up. Yeah, right? 28. But you know what I also notice is like the people that I used to go out with when I was younger, some of them still go out all the time. Like yeah. I don't go out much. I go out for special occasions and birthdays. Like that's really it. Like, oh, uh, an event, you know, your guys are shit or a birthday. Dude, I look at some of these people that are younger than me even that mm-hmm. go out on the regular, like regular basis. And they look fucking old, dude. Yeah. Like really old. Yeah. And I feel like such a, I don't know. I take care of my body, my skin, my, you know, I see you at the gym as much as I can right now because I'm shooting. But yeah. when I'm not, it's like three times a week. Yeah. I feel great. Yeah. I've lost 14 pounds since it's been two months. You're in there losing weight? Well, no, because I haven't worked out. So I was bulking, bulking, oh, bulking, gotcha, bulking. Gotcha, gotcha. And then I you stopped actually, working out. And I'm I like, now, motherfuckers dude, like you. I lost, <laughs> I hate, four, I hate I lost you so 14 much. pounds, bro. I feel crazy. My clothes don't fit me the same. Like I had to, I'm like, okay, uh, okay. These dude. jeans don't fit. Okay, oh, these jeans do. God. Guys like sure. guys like you who are in there and the, when they say they lost 14 pounds, I wanna, I'm like, and no, 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 that's a bad thing. Like you're going in there to get bigger. I'm trying to get fucking smaller every day and it's an uphill battle. You, lo- you lose the weight and you get sad. You're like, I was. Dude, I have never weighed more than 164 pounds. 
And what's the dream? You just want to get yoked or what? No, no, no. Dreams not to get yoked. Dreams to be strong. Strong, yeah. That's the thing. Like, I don't want to be disposable. I yeah. saw this video of this guy throwing somebody out the club. <laughs> you don't want to get ragged? No. And he's like, throws this disposable. motherfucker off of his shoulders like a jacket. Yeah, and yeah, I just yeah. saw that video and said, that can't be me ever. I yeah, can yeah. never take that fucking chance. And also, like, you know, jail's not anywhere in my mind or going to jail or anything. But yeah. if. Yes. God forbid. Yeah. Can't be in there, you know, being somebody's fucking baby. Yeah. I gotta be in there being a man. You wanna be sturdy. Yeah. I wanna be, yeah, sturdy enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, to be you, in there you don't wanna be an afterthought. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wanna be like a, like, like in the no. fight, when the fight breaks off, you don't wanna be the guy that just, they go like this to. You wanna yeah. be someone you gotta consider. Consider me, motherfucker. Consider me a threat yeah. on all levels. I mean, I see I see your boy in there, Lionel, and I saw I looked over the other day and I'm like, he's a big dude, right? You don't even know. Bro, I looked over and he's just banging out pull ups. I was like, <laughs> do you have any idea the power it takes to mo to pull up a, a body that size? Dude, he did a one arm push up the other day. He's so strong. It's I because he doesn't that kind of size can go either way. You can be that you can be that size and not be that strong. He is that's all, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of muscle in there. But he's gentle, he's the gentle giant. I get that So vibe. that's, that's right where here. it's like, he's so like calm, so normal, always just like a goofball. But man, I would hate to fight that motherfucker, dude. Yeah. Like if somebody was like, you gotta fight one of your homies, he's the last one on the list. The last one, yeah. Cause I know he he's like, has the strength of like a, hate to say it cause he's a large black man, but of like a gorilla where right. he can just rip your face apart right. and you just <laughs> right. have to be like, well, yeah <laughs> yeah that's a person that can literally rip your arms off and would never he's very he's just, exactly you get i mean you can tell you can just tell by his his whole vibe is very like you can tell he's a peaceful dude Calm, but man. like if he just listened if he picked up like a guy like that this is what's fucked up about that a guy like that you drop him into the jiu-jitsu mats right put him in a gi he's he's just gonna he's gonna destroy people because oh, he's, gonna, he's gonna end somebody's life you know he'll just like ragdoll you and just crush you and like there's almost nothing you can do no matter how much technique you have no. You know what I mean? He'll just okay. like break your back. But that's the thing where it's like the jujitsu idea in my head, because I have not done it yet. I know that everybody I, who I know who started it gets addicted on some next level shit. Yeah. Um, I haven't started because of that. I'm also like, I still play basketball, tennis, these things. But dude, like the reason I like jujitsu is because it's like the little guy can always win. And me being the little guy and always being the youngest of all my homies or the smallest of all my homies, it's like, Oh, I can win. Like I can. Oh fuck. yeah. Oh, dude. The thought of being like, the issue that happens to me now is I go out and since I've gotten stronger, whenever I see an altercation happen, I'm like, what's going on? Over yeah, there? yeah. You know, like who needs my help? Yeah. For some reason, yeah. knowing no matter what, like I get over there and get, you know, yeah. slaughtered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But jujitsu, I feel like would bring me to a point where I can like. I mean, the the other side of that is there there are guys in there who are. I don't know. There's guys in there that. I have a hundred pounds on mm -hmm. that by the rules of jujitsu, I can, I can never win. They just like, what are the rules to jujitsu? I mean, you're, I mean, it's, you're basically wrestling. Yes. Can't hit each other. Right. No hitting at all. There's no hitting. Uh, beyond that, you're wrestling. You're just, you're basically wrestling, but it's very complicated in the technique and what you're doing and like starting on top. And like, there's guys in there who are, you know, you would put two of us in a room and say which one of these guys can win the people would point to me but the, the reality is they're fucking i don't know they have just enough technique and strength to just keep me from doing what i want to do which is like you're basically like a lot of the time you're basically just trying to get around on top of someone like past their hips right and there's guys that just stop you from doing that like a person like you long legs long arms well i feel you like fight i'm the worst i feel like i lose everything I'm such a little guy mentally. Like I'm flexible, but <laughs> <said> mentally. <laughs> I'm flexible, but like, dude, in a fight, I like turn my survival goes up, and it's just like I will use anything: biting, kicking, screaming, yelling, tickling, anything. I'll grab somebody's fucking nut. Have you? I mean, if you did, you get in a lot of fights as a kid? No, like yes, but no. It's mainly like bullies. Bullies. That was a lot of bullies. Mm -hmm. You have a napkin. Mm -hmm. I'm a sweaty boy. Um. Yeah, a lot of napkins. I mean, a lot of napkins. A lot of like, a lot of altercations, but never like fist fighting. Never was like throwing punches crazy. Yeah. And I think that's because like, I've always been a goofball. Yeah. And being funny, like you always, I made a lot of jokes. Thank you so much. I made a lot of jokes when I was younger, but I never got punched in the face for my jokes until I was 21. Right. A lot, like <laughs> you dude. Oh. Someone, 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 someone popped you for. Uh, oh, someone for not only them? popped me, bro, got me like fuck, like I was over with. No shit. Didn't knock me out. Didn't knock me down. But he punched me so hard in the face that I needed stitches and I had a bruised eyeball. Like I was fucked up. No fucking. Kid. Was okay, we gotta talk about that. What? First okay. of all, 
You must have roasted the skin off this motherfucker. Because- okay, so that's the thing. Once I know I'm pushing your buttons, I will yeah. not stop. Okay. It's just it's okay. over with. So this situation happened. It was like I was at a friend's birthday party, um, and we ended up. Thank you so much. We ended up at Mel's Diner. Yep. Mel's Diner, you know, twenty four seven. You yeah. can go there as ways as you want to yeah. go there. I was asleep in a driveway when somebody woke me up and said, "Do you want to go eat?" Which means that I was obviously way too wasted to even operate. Oh yeah. So I get there and get on my okay. Oh, am I too far? <laughs> I get there and I'm like, you're asleep in a driveway where? At my friend's house. Like and, we had left a party, went to their house. Okay. I'm at their house. I like walk out of the car. I'm like, I'm laying down right here. Oh, like, you laid down right there. That kind in of in the wasted. driveway. Okay. And okay. someone's like, Yo, Simon, let's go eat. And I was like, All right, bet. So I jumped in the car. We get out to. I wake up in the car to my homies yelling at this guy. And I'm like, yeah. you know, I get out on some like drunk shit on some, what's going on? I was drinking Hennessy that night. So okay. your courage is a little different. Yeah, yeah. I feel like when I drink Hennessy, I'm like a six foot nine black guy. Yeah. Like I'm Lionel size, but taller. Yeah. But um, And also like an expert in, in, in <laughs> hand-to-hand combat. Just, just train my yeah, whole life yeah, for anything. Yeah. Bro, so. You're basically Jason Momoa at that point. <laughs> yes. Just. Aquaman, fucking yeah. ready to fight anything. And I get out of the car and he's like, yo, I don't want any of you Beverly Hills privilege fucks here, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, dude, I'm not that. Yeah. Instantly like, I don't know the fuck you think you're talking to, bitch. I'm this, I'm that. I'm all sorts of name calling, dude. Right. I'm really a, I know how to get to it. So yeah, I got yeah. to it. <laughs> and he's like, yo, who the fuck is, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're, you guys came here earlier. You guys are idiots. You need this, you need that, whatever. I'm like, dude, how about you fucking suck my dick? And he's like, what? And I'm like, I'm talking shit. This guy is, I'm there with another friend of mine who played professional basketball at the time and he was 6'6". Six, six. This guy was three inches taller than him. Like, oh, this no. was a big dude. So the guy says, yeah, if you touch me, I'm gonna knock you out. Mm. What a threat, you know? Yeah. Bitch, ah. you can't do shit to me. So I walk over to him, I look at him, in his chest, I look up at his face and I slap him in the chest like a like a bitch, like literally just like mm, mm, mm. like a dainty leather glove, yeah. like like, like you're what are you gonna fucking a do? Challenge. And he's like, bro, what the fuck? And the security guard there is like, he knows me. He's like, Taco, just like please, 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 just not today. I'm like, no, 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 fuck this big bald motherfucker. And then I just kept going. I said, bro, I'd be mad too. I'd be this. I'd be that. You work, you fucking mad ass nigga. You just mad because I came here just fucking being fire and this and that. I'm just young and happy and successful. Dude, dude I must have pressed some button on that dude because he really had it out for me. I stood up behind him while he's arguing with my homie on this like ledge there. He turns around towards me. I fall off the ledge into his face which I'm yelling at the top of my lungs, by the way, while this is happening. I slip, Wait, you I just, fall. You just slip. I slip and you fall. You fall on him. Onto him. And while I fall onto him, he's just like, <clears throat> one punch. Dude, my eyeball was <laughs> gone. Like, I thought it was, bro, my homies were like, we got to go to the hospital. I'm like, no, no, no. Take me home. I'll be all right. Give me some ice. Put some ice on my face. Went home. My cousin was staying with us at the time. When I walked in the house, He's like, what happened to you? What the fuck happened to you? Bro, he's like, dude, can you see right now? I'm like, I can see. I'm all right, man. I'll be all right, whatever. I wake up in the morning. Bro, it feels like I got hit by a car. My sister sees my face and is like sobbing in my room. Like, my brother's going to die. Like, it's all over. And, dude, I, I immediately went to an eye doctor. And he was like, had you not come here, you probably would have lost your eyelid, bro. Oh, it's my. fucked. Cause he split, bro. He split. He had a ring on. He split me from here all the way down. So I don't know if you could see now, but like my eyelid is missing a piece technically. Get the fuck out of here. So every once in a while, I see a photo of myself, and I'm like, man, I look like I'm cross-eyed. And I'm like, oh, that's because I have too, too much white showing on one side of my eye. But bro, yeah, I had 14 stitches, uh, six across my eyebrow, eight across my eyelid. Oh man, I was in an eye patch for nine days. Um, dude, I had to put like the equivalent of Neosporin in my eyeball every day, which you kind of get used to on the third day and it starts to feel really nice. But yeah, an ointment in your eye, dog, like imagine Vaseline in your eye. <laughs> Just, oh my God. <laughs> and then I had a thing called, I, I don't want to mess this up. I think it's called a, um, I'm a sty? No, a stigma maybe. Oh, stigmatism? No, it's like a thing that they put, it's a plastic piece they put into your eye 
they put it into my eyelid to keep my eyes my a the stint. skin together a stint a stint and the stint's supposed to come out two weeks later and you know six years later no five years later it was still in my eyeball and i had no idea during covid i like woke up one day my eye was itching so i keep scratching my fucking eye and there's like a little plastic thing hanging out of my tear duct. get the fuck out of here and my girlfriend's like dude you can't you have to go to the doctor i was like no no no, i can get this shit out that's what they're gonna pull it out either way so i'm gonna just pull it out yeah and i start pulling it out bro it hurts so bad dog it feels like somebody's like poking my eye with a needle and i get it like maybe like i don't know half an inch out and i'm just like i need to go to, like i can't blink i can't do anything and she can't drive so i was she can't drive no she okay. was my ex now but she was british so she She's just Japanese. didn't drive okay <laughs> what can i say that? i didn't mean it like that <laughs> that's what i mean bro but it ended up just me driving with like one eye open to this fucking eye doctor in the middle of covid while it was raining okay so you you okay this is the best part about this is that you usually these stories are like yeah, you know, I was protecting someone or I got in the wrong place, wrong time. Mm -mm. And you basically, you attacked this guy. With, oh, I fucked up. You, pro you provoked him by all means. And then you threw your body on him. I started this myself. <laughs> you, I started it, finished it, and you failed. You held your body on top of a man. <laughs> and to defend himself, he uppercuts you. And you almost lose your eye twice. But what's crazier, though, I forgot to add this part. When we got done with the altercation, I'm just walking away like this, like, ow, 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 ow. And I keep saying, you got me. You fucking got me. You got me. You got me. <laughs> That's very the funny. The cops show up and they're like, what happened? What's going on? And I'm like, I lost. Can I go home? And they're like, ooh, yeah, go ahead. No shit. <laughs> Let me go. Also, like, you know, the other part of it is he didn't. Sometimes a guy will decide to pack you out also. He might just yeah. punch. Some people are angry at me and they hit you once. They want to hit you 18 times. I think for me, my lesson was learned. And ever since then, even when I've gotten into altercation since then, when I'm talking shit, it's always <laughs> based on competition. Always. So for me, it's like basketball is a huge oh, okay, yeah. component in my yeah. life. And I've always talked shit about basketball. Yeah. And so if I'm playing basketball, I played basketball against this pro one time. This guy named Isaiah Whitehead. He played for the Brooklyn Nets last. And I was busting his ass. Yeah. And as somebody who didn't make my varsity basketball team, didn't play college basketball, has no basketball accolade that I could claim and show any trophy or anything, you know, it was like, this was my moment. So right. I was talking my shit. Yeah. Bad. Right. I had made like four threes in a row. I'd come down and said like, bums can't, you're just a bum. Like, oh my God. Said things like, how's playing basketball in Israel or in Thailand? Like I was saying fucked up oh, jokes. Deep. Just, just getting to him. Cutting deep. <laughs> and his homies are there with him and he's from New York. Homies come off the bench, come to talk to him. Like, bro, I don't know what you think this is. Like, I get it, but like, it's just basketball. It's not. Let's not get too too ahead of ourselves here. And um, he he got really ahead of himself, and he kept going, kept going. So you know, one thing leads to another. You call your friends, they call their friends. You guys end up meeting up, squashing things. But instead, it could have been a good old fashioned rumble. Yes, but I think the decision was. Off. The, the dance off would have, I know. So much in the middle, that. everyone screams, somebody just starts going like this. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, everyone catches it. It's like, uh. dude, no, for me, it was like, I don't like to, I'm not like a, a thug or anything. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I'm a fucking, yeah. a funny guy. Yeah. I like to have a good time and make sure everybody's happy. But um, I also like to, you know, make sure everybody's aware that I'm not a bitch. I'm aware. I, see, I, I, I understand more of what you're getting after now. You're just like, dude, I'm I get not, it. You're, I, you got a thin frame. You got a big mouth, big mouth, and you want to just fill in the gap in between. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, you just want to make With sure that you're good muscle, right? You want to be a little bit covered, just, which is like just a little bit, yeah. And also, you're hitting like you're doing the right thing because you're at the gym now. You know, you're coming up on thirty. It's gonna you're gonna solidify even more, and you know you're ahead of the game because it's so much. I feel like the dream would be like. My dream is like to wake up and be like, ah, oh, fuck, I lost 14 pounds. Like, that's just like, I can't lose 14 pounds in a year of working out hard. It's fucking crazy. How much do you work out now? I'm, I work out six days a week. <laughs> like, if you're I'm not, in there six days a week? If I'm, I'm there, if I, I'm typically like, I, I fell off the past few weeks because I've been like scattered, but typically I'm in there five days and then I hike for, I hike for a day. Or like I'm, if I'm in peace. You saying I hike for a day does not, it didn't mean like I went on a hike at minutes. Like I was hiking for 24 hours. No, no, no. I wish, <laughs> I wish, no. No, I just get my hikes in. But, uh, or, you know, or like I'll try to rotate into whatever. I'll, you know, I'll do fucking hot yoga. But the main thing is jujitsu and then work with Jess to try to like. The best. Yeah, she's the best. And I'm trying to strengthen, you know, like I'm not trying to be. 
I'm just trying. I'm trying to be stronger in a way that's that's more. Um, I'm trying to have more of a strong structure. Like I've, I've, I don't do any vanity shit. Like you know, the vanity muscles are like biceps and chest. Yeah, like, looking big. Yeah, looking like big guys with big biceps are not. They're not strong. They just look. They just look puffy. It's not strength. Strength just is all puffy. core. Yeah. Like look at strong is is your boy fucking. Hall, like he literally is doing pull-ups like it's like a tank doing pull-ups like it's impossible i look at he he looks big I, you obviously don't know what we're talking about but he looks big but he's not like it's not like a uh, it's not no. an aggressive big it's like a he might be strong but you know he's strong you know what i mean it's a he's a sneaky snake that's what he yeah. is sneaky big buff it's like you know like nelly in the gym you know that guy Immediately, I thought of Nelly, the singer. No, and I wish, rapper. I wish Nelly was at a gym. He'd be sick. It'd be a whole different gym. <laughs> Wait, Everyone's wearing bandit. No, and Nelly, he's like, um, he's like a Pacific Islander dude trainer. Oh yeah, he looks the guy just with like the, the rocks. Yeah, him oh. and his, him and his, him and his brother in there. That, that shit is crazy. That dude is, he is, he's huge, right? Muscular, and he when if next time you're in there, watch how he moves. He moves like a cat. He yeah, makes no he's sound. Not, he's very he's like, agile just, and very yeah. like. He bounces. It's yeah, not he, just, a, he hops up. He he busts it. He lands. There's never a thud. It's just, it's quiet. Everything's quiet. He's just like. Psh, psh, One day I went in there. I want to say like a little later than I usually go, like a one o'clock or something. And it was him in there training with this woman, and there was a M16 in there and like an M4 and these what two large knives. Yeah, this was like some oh shit. on the mats. Yeah, they were like training for because he's a, a stunt double for a lot of things. So oh, they were okay. training that shit. When you walk into the gym and see these big ass bunch guys, of rifles, you're just like, "What the fuck?" Like you're like, "Ooh, am I?" <laughs> Have you been in there when uh, Megan the Stallion's there? No. All right. Do you know her, Megan? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, she's been in there a couple times, and she has like a Blackstone, Blackwater style security. It's like you'll see. There's just like it looks like kind of like beefy white dads when you see those kind of security you know they're top top level because they're like they're like they're you a know, mental game yeah they're like not here they're like sliding into shit they're like if there's a threat they like do it secretly and they're still by their client you know what i mean it's like yeah dude, this nigga yeah, just guys break in, like members in only. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly like there's like a guy in like a members only jacket with an earpiece and glasses you're like what's going on he's Who's this fucking door, narc bro right? yeah exactly yeah well they, they they lock the whole shit down when she comes in which is crazy um no jonathan majors works out there a bunch he's I think the strongest man I've ever seen in my Jonathan life. Jonathan Majors, is that? He's an actor. He's uh, the new movie he's in is uh, it's like a flight movie. It's him and this guy Glenn Powell. I can't remember the name of it to save my life. Uh, but he also plays Kane and all like the Marvel stuff coming up. He's in Creed. Okay. He's like the big fucking black guy. He was he always is in there like eating and working out, which makes uh, him the biggest beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So niggas like walking around eating like a. A carton of eggs, yeah, scrambled eggs, and just yeah. doing crazy fucking shit, benching like nine hundred pounds. You're just like, yeah, it's no more, spot. Yeah, no, no, no. It's more. It's 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 scary when a dude's savagely eating too. When you're like, wait, you lift so much you have to eat in the middle of your workout. <laughs> like, if you don't eat right now, your muscles aren't going to get enough power. Like, <laughs> he's just scarfing it down. And I feel like when you're scarfing down shit like that, you're not even eating for flavor. I eat for flavor. I don't right. eat for like nutrition you're a pleasure eater oh all pleasure oh, okay everything everything is unhealthy the only thing i don't eat is cheese or dairy because my tummy you're lactose intolerant oh no 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 my okay. tummy he's got a baby it. tummy no a babe bitch ass baby tummy. he's got a bitch ass tummy he's got a, he's got a 60 year old man's salty mouth <laughs> a little tiny a little tiny amoeba tummy and and, and he's just built like gumby at the moment For but, sure. but working on it you working. know trying to get to brolic but i don't think it'll ever happen no, nah, I mean you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be very strong with the frame. You're just gonna be strong, and people won't see it coming. And then you're gonna be like, then you're gonna one day you're just gonna be like, I'm gonna be a bully tonight. You're gonna reach over and whack and be like, no, I I listen. I'm I'm in the same camp. Like I don't I don't want to fight anybody. I've never instigated a fight in my life. But somebody <laughs> knocks on your fucking door with that bullshit. I mean, listen. I will. I will. Granted. You, I would not want to fight you. I will. You don't I, have a frame I want to be physical with. Right, but I don't. I've never picked. A, I've been in fights. I've been attacked. I don't ever pick. I've never picked a fight. I'll never hit somebody first. I just not. It's not how I get down. Same. It would take a lot for me to hit somebody first. Like it would take a, them to like fuck up, like punch somebody else or hit my car or something. Yeah, hit your car. Yeah. Or even if they hit my car, it'd probably if, unless they were a dickhead, I'd be like. Yeah, I mean it's, we'll it's, survive. it's it's you know it's also weird times right now. I mean you you know it's wild out there. You just don't know. People are people are like you know because you first of all there is no fear of any any kind of like 
law at this point in time in LA. You have to literally cut someone's head off and take it into the police station to get arrested, right? Like everything it's, else is up for grabs. But it's interesting that people think it's like, this is the first time LA's been like this. Right. Where everybody's like, oh my God, LA's so crazy right now, isn't it? It's like, no, nigga, it's always been this way. It's just the first time that it's past fucking Pico or past Wilshire mm -hmm. or that yeah. it's been filmed. I think that's, that's the biggest thing is like being able to see what's actually going on is a lot different than mm -hmm. hearing about some shit from your homie. You're right. Homie it's always been certain neighborhoods have always been lawless, but now, now it's, it's like, bro, yeah. Beverly Hills, like the other day I was driving, I left a restaurant in Beverly Hills and now they have this private security that drives around and this nigga just cut me off. And I was like, bro, you are a glorified security guard. Get the fuck out of my fucking way. So I'm honking and honking and he looks at me, he's like, what the fuck? Like, bro, learn how to fucking drive around here, you dick. Like, bro, get the fuck out of my fucking way. I had, listen, I, had I hate a, that shit. I had a security guard the other day. Speaking of me just saying, I don't want to get in contact. I had a security <laughs> guard the other, the other day. This security guard, I, I moved a cone. I was parking, I go going to the movies. There was a cone blocking off a piece of the fucking shit, just a cone. I have my, I was with my girl and a friend. I go, can you move that cone? Let's park there so we can get to our movie. We move the cone. This fool comes out, little sawed off security guard. Hot. He comes out. Not on like one, two, he comes out on 10. What the fuck? Would I come? Would, you want to go to your fucking job? What the fuck are you doing? Move your, and I Move go, my cone, bro. and I start trying to de-escalate. <laughs> I have like a three, I have like a three thing, a three sentence thing. Like I go, I, I calm it down. And then on the third one, I when I start to fucking lose it. And I just was like, all right, what's up? And I started, and my girlfriend's like, you can't, you're not doing that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> But like security guards have a false sense of uh, they have a false sense of power exactly because they have some sort of uniform. Like, do you see the milkman or the postman acting up like that? Like, <laughs> they got lapels. They got they got those things on their fucking on their shoulders. Like, it doesn't make you anything. Any security guard that has a gun clip with no gun in it, it's like bro, <laughs> the empty if gun you clip. Get the fuck out of here! Listen, like, I got a clip full of skittles. Your, yeah. <laughs> I'll fucking pepper spray you to death. You fuck like, yeah. dude, get away from me, dog. Yeah, I don't. They got that like. It's like they got that that bravado. But it's that power, that like power trip shit. I can't do the power trip shit. Yeah. The power trip shit is really how motherfuckers end up in jail. Yeah. Everybody thinks they're fucking almighty fucking Iron Man. It's like, dog, you will fall too. Yeah, the power tripping and the, and the ego and the bullying, I never respond. I, I hate the bullying shit. It's the worst. I hate so, when somebody bullies somebody that can't do anything about it. Yeah. Like bullying the stupid kid. Like, nigga, he just dumb. He can't yeah, help yeah, it. Like, yeah, <laughs> he yeah. just gonna be stupid regardless of what you say. Yeah. Yeah, bullying is, is uh, I don't know. I kind of... There's a lot of bullies in my neighborhood growing up. and uh, Where'd you grow up here? I grew up in Venice. So a different time. D yeah, obviously. Venice yeah. in the past fucking eight years, ten years is... Yeah. It's a whole and sweaters yeah. and coffee shops yeah. and everything was vegan. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't and even... I haven't, I haven't been living in Venice in ten years. Okay, like, I fucking hate Venice. And yeah. everybody always gets upset with me about this, but it's because I grew up in LA. Yeah. In Mid-City, Crenshaw, Washington. Yeah. Bro, Venice to me was like skaters and white guys with crazy tattoos yeah and like a beer here and there you know what i mean and now it's become this place where everybody like from la tr or it's a transplant place where like yeah. downtown is no one who is from la lives in venice or in downtown right those are two places that you move to now from san francisco boston right. uruguay wherever the fuck you're from right but to me it's just like dude that shit is trash trash and you're paying 3.5 million dollars for a house because someone told you Whatever, that's what it's like. That's your status. By the symbol. beach, but honestly, like Venice Beach is like the nastiest beach I've ever been to. In yeah, my life. it's fucked up. It's, it used, listen, it, there was a point when it wasn't. It, it was, was a golden time. It was great. It was beautiful as ours. And they're, listen, they're serious neighborhoods in Venice for oh. a long time. And, uh, are you they know, all gone now? No, I mean, they're still there. Listen, some, some of those, some of those neighborhoods, like some of the, you know, some of the essays, some of the crips, like it's, it's generational. They're, they're dug in. Some are moved out, some are, it's still, look at still like a Silver heavy Lake presence. Now. That's what I feel like is like Silver Lake to me growing up was East LA. Right. And then when somebody, the first person. Echo Park. Echo Park was a place you didn't fuck around. You didn't Bro, go to Echo Park Lake when no. you were a kid. It was wild. Like now people going to dinner. There's like, for real? People, <laughs> people were like getting off the plane. They actually riding in a duck in Echo Park Lake. I wish there was like a little fucking, a little time travel button. And they transplanted, you know, 15 years in the past. Bro, what was the, there was an episode of uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air where Carlton is like a thug out of nowhere and he's at, right. uh, he's not at Echo Park. What's the park right there though? MacArthur Park? He's at MacArthur Park. Oh my and, God. Uh, this is dark skin at Viv. She's like, MacArthur Park? And she keeps <laughs> saying that shit. Yeah. And as a kid, I knew that to be like the most dangerous place in the world. And now as an adult, it's like, yeah, MacArthur Park is where I, uh, that's where I buy my, my groceries now because there's an organic place. So, you know what I mean? It's. It's all changed. Like, we're talking about a different park. MacArthur Park is still a little cutty. Really? Yeah, I don't think there's any. MacArthur Park is still like it's not as bad. MacArthur Where's that Park on Wilshire and 
Yeah, Wilshire and uh, yeah, yeah, at the end of Wilshire near downtown. It's not that bad anymore. Really? I mean, no. we had, okay. MacArthur Park. When I was a kid, it was literally when people talk about it, they they literally reference this, like the 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 movie th- the the video thriller. They're like, it's like thriller. Yeah. Like it's zombies, it's ghosts, it's ghouls, and you can't get out alive. And like kids I knew were going to buy drugs there and being like, you went and copped in MacArthur Park. Like that was where you get heroin and shit. And like you know, that's um, a different LA. LA back then, I feel like uh, heroin was like normalish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my age, it was like. Uh, Weed was, everybody was smoking weed, everybody was drinking. And then we started getting into like prescription drugs, I'd yeah. say in like eighth and ninth grade. Oh. That was what happened in my what generation. What were you guys getting into in eighth and ninth grade? Uh, Xanax was, we called them footballs at the time. Footballs. Um, and dude, I remember being at like a girl's house and her dad, who was a firefighter, came in <clears throat> to like one of these kids that I knew, this white kid, uh, doing like a line of Xanax maybe. And the voice that he's like, get the fuck out! Like that shit. Was like, <laughs> it was like, oh no, the world is ending. Um, so you guys were fucking with pills in ninth grade. I wasn't personally. You I was weren't. only. I started smoking weed at twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, I dabbled until fifteen, sixteen. I stopped at sixteen and started again at twenty-one. So for five years, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't do anything. I didn't take my first Xanax until I was twenty-one. You never got caught up, really. Like, you, did you have periods where you? I had like, a I moment, need... but it wasn't. Uh, yeah. It was a moment. It right. was like a, a real moment. There was. No, I don't think there was ever a place where everyone had to step in. I, I know some of my friends were like, "It's time to stop this shit." So maybe when you got your eyes split in half. Oh no, no, no. That, that was. Uh, I wasn't on Xanax then. No, no, no. I was on Xanax after that for sure, though. I needed that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no drugs. I think. Thankfully, the only thing I would say that I'm even close to being addicted to is weed. And it's just really now at this point, oral fixation. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't alcohol. I've started drinking wine recently and really loving wine. Yeah. Oh, I fucking, I love wine. You're right not now. an alcoholic. You don't, you no. don't have a drug problem. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, you're fine. I'm you're fine. I mean, I think that, um, man, taking, I remember taking pill, taking pills as a kid and drinking is like, you get to experience like real time travel. You know, you all of a sudden you're like, wait, how do I, why am I here? Yeah, how do I wake up here? Yeah, what am I, why am I at this club? And like everything in between is just murky. <laughs> Cause I always wonder like when, when you black out, how do you, if you're blacked out, how do you even operate, operate the machine to get there? Like you're somehow doing all the shit that people do. Hey, how are you gonna come in this club? Can I have a beer, sir? But you just don't remember it and you still know how to do it. Which reminds me, okay, odd future. Um, I, I, my, my experience with Odd Future was, and I believe it was, was it A.G. Rojas who did the first video? Do you know? Okay. The video with the, the Earl fish, video. The Earl video. Uh-huh. I believe that was A.G. Rojas. I'm not, I don't know. Oh, I'm the worst at remembering you don't know. names. Okay, fine. I could be wrong. <laughs> and I hope I'm not miss. I hope I'm not miss. But anyways, I saw the video and I remember just being like, <laughs> like, whoa this because because it had never no one had listen it's so rare that anything new ever happens ever okay like new shit doesn't happen we we like we get some new shit here's what happens you get some new shit and and then then you got to eat off of it for 15 years while everyone just like imitates it yeah and then a new thing happens like because i'm always like when the fucking when do we get a new thing like skateboarding wasn't a thing snowboarding wasn't a thing cent all the time when i want a new thing because he was the first thing that i can remember that took over the world yes. in my eyes where i was like what is it was like who is 50 cent and then it was like you don't know who 50 cent is you fucking idiot get yeah. out of here like yeah that shit is crazy listen i bought i bought g unit i i bought g unit sneakers not because I bought it because I was so overwhelmed by how powerful he was that I felt like I had to pay homage to this man. That's why I bought, I didn't buy the sneakers because like I'm a fucking goon who's like, I'm gonna wear what that guy wears. I bought the sneakers because I was so impressed by how much work he put in. Oh, he's like, he, he, that's another, he basically fucking destroyed the musical landscape, right? Yeah, I think that'll probably be the best documentary that we'll ever see because that was the first, dude, he came in and took over the whole radio yeah. he also turned a nigga's career upside down like yeah. remember ja Rule oh. was like the fucking guy he did, he's always saying bro that. people forget that ja Rule even exists nigga yeah. like his name is like synonymous with losing yeah. you know what i mean it's like oh man you got ja Rule too like it's like it's over bro he was at the top of his fucking game he was so big that he was doing parodies of greece in music videos that's how big you are You're, he's untouchable he was like i'm i can do anything i can i'm a, he was one step away Except from from beat. sucking a man's nipple on stage and getting the grammy for 
for it, right? He could at that, imagine at that time too, right? He could have done anything. And 50 Cent comes around and just goes, you're over. Like just- It's the end. Destroy, boy. he, I mean- Quietly too. Well, he, not quietly actually. He came in and just was like, he no. sucks, he sucks, he sucks. Oh. It was, yeah, it was bad. He revolution. one thing 50 Cent did is he revolutionized beef. Oh, for sure. Right, like beef was not, like there was always beef in rap, but it was never like, it, and there was always battles and people were always dissing people, but this dude, he basically just- the, He made a career out of it. He made That's a career the difference. out of it. Yeah, the biggest rapper in the world decides that he has a vendetta, <laughs> so he's going to destroy you. And he kept being petty. The man is worth mil multi millions of he's dollars. He's still petty though. He's That's so petty. What makes it even better is like yeah. it's not, it's not a show. It's not a game to him. No, it's not no, like no. he's putting it on no. to, for everybody. Like no. like he just enjoys. It. No, he'll like, never make amends. <laughs> he'll never come clean and be like, "I'm sorry." He will be this dude until he fucking dies. Because he'll he'll just. I mean, he was airing out. Um, he just got into like a really petty lawsuit with someone over like something really stupid. Like he, he countersued someone over like it was probably like 60 grand and they didn't have any money. And he's like, oh, what a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, me waste this. let me waste your time. Yeah, let me waste your time and money. <laughs> make you get a lawyer. Um, so, yeah. What's that? No, that's the very recent one. Yes. He, he did he, have a beef with something there. Like he got a massage they, or some shit. No, no, no. They, they used him as a reference for penile implants and he got mad. And he's like, my dick is real. How dare you? <laughs> and he sued them. But before them, he sued like a, I don't know, somebody. He sued somebody. He he is the pettiest. Um, but okay, so when I, I'm just gonna say like when that video came out, I watched the video, and it's very rare that you see things where you're like, oh, this is brand new. No one's seen this side. Like no one. And like I I was from that point on, I fully were like was in on that whole world, right? Mm -hmm. I just started like investigating. Oh my god, there's this that, that like you know, and like and it was also new like. Frank Ocean, all these things, right? Where like no one had yet even defined themselves as who they were yet. It was just like all the parts of this crew. And I'm following this shit. And like, and Earl, people might not know this, but like Earl was like at the front of it all. Like he was like the figurehead for in the beginning. Am I wrong? Yeah, technically because he was missing. Well, so before was, he went missing, though, before he went missing, everyone, his was the first name to come out. Like Tyler wasn't as preeminent as Earl yeah, in the very beginning. The, yeah, the video, we had did French and VCR, I think, was done at the time. I don't know if Tebe was still here, but when he had, he became such a topic of conversation, like we would be sitting at the studio and it'd be like, I remember like one of the first people to tweet was like Pete Wentz mm. was like dinner topic or some shit. Where's Earl Sweatshirt? And we were like, what the fuck right. is Pete Wentz? Good. That's how long ago it was when Pete Wentz was a thing. Like <laughs> Pete Wentz, so everyone doesn't know, is one of the first guys to put his dick on Twitter. Right, that yes. was his thing. Yeah. He's a big emo guy, and he threw his dick on the on the internet, and everyone went crazy. And for And then it. people forget he's half black. He is. Hell yeah! Get the fuck out of here. If I'm not mistaken. He's like one of those like. There's a list of people who no one knows is black. Yeah, and he's on that list. Okay, so I see the video. I'm I'm now in. I'm not like the the all the all the shit going in the blender, the pills, the shrooms, all that all that that whole thing, mind boggling. I'm like, this is a we're seeing um, a whole different view of black youth culture, and it's not what the rest of the world thinks it is, right? It's and the it's, opposite of a dare ad and we're doing everything that they do in Jackass, you know what I mean? Right. It, and we're also making good music. And I think that's, good music, yeah. at the end of it, at the core is music. Well, yes. you know, the antics and all that shit, the shock value, yeah, it, it exists. But at the core, if the music was terrible, no one would give a fuck, right. you know what I mean? And I think, regard, like, looking back at it now, it feels so fucking crazy because it, it's one of those things where it's like a blackout. Yeah. Like you're doing all this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were operating saying hello, all that shit, but you wake up and you're like, it's been 12 years. God yeah, damn. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, it, listen, it, 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 watching it, watching it from afar is, is like, cause it's always been peripheral to what, what we've been doing and friends of mine, you know, like mm -hmm. we had a, you know, we had a studio with man face, like, you know, you guys were like these kids that they were with, like, I've always, you know, you're aware. So you don't really, track the track the, the trajectory until a couple years ago you know garrett you know garrett gutierrez I mean, of course of yeah. course of okay course. you know Garrett. obviously i don't know which one who's i know it's from to tyler There's, but garrett's like yeah i'm going to see my friend's band play at um and he said like the great the forum or something i'm like oh okay who is it it's tyler i'm like what and like i just wasn't paying attention he's like yeah he's headlining at the i'm like what are you talking about so yeah now so you know we did the the carnival for this would have uh we did seven years of that i think yeah and then COVID and all that shit and just like giving it a rest for a second. But, you know, before COVID, Tyler was playing the carnival. That was like our big show through in LA because we never did shows in LA really because 
LA shows usually sucked and the carnival was like the best way to get everybody in one place and right. sell all the tickets. And you know, now this dude is doing, you know, he could do three nights at Staples. That's crazy. He did, you know, he could do two nights at MSG, you can do this, you could do that. Yeah. And that's the game changer. He did two nights at MSG this year. That's crazy. And it's fucking mind blowing. Like it's dude, mind that's blowing. and a lot of a lot of people I feel like um see their homies when like my sister also being a musician or Earl or Frank or you know how do you leper and all of them it's like a lot of people in that position get jealous right and me being the little homie like I never ever to this day have felt any sort of anything but like gratitude and like this is sick yeah and I always look at like my other I don't want to say like other people in music but people who are my equivalent job or I don't know situation you know as far as like proximity to a rapper and i'm like damn dude you didn't you didn't do anything but be there with them yeah like, you didn't do anything else you were just their fucking homie you had no other anything going on and i'm like dog why what the fuck are you doing like why didn't you think about this why didn't you think about that yeah and you know for a long time i was just plus one just a homie just this just that and then um 2000 and 14 i started to like drift off a little bit not like in a bad way where it's like any bad blood but i just was like oh i'm gonna go try this i'm gonna go try that i'm gonna go try this while i wasn't touring with tyler and, and that was what opened all the doors for me and like uh -huh. opportunity and because of that all the things that have happened i'm so thankful for but yeah watching that shit it's like niggas don't know how to not be weird or how to not overstep like yeah. that's a huge thing is people love to be like taking credit for things they didn't do yeah. you know what i mean yeah. i know a lot of niggas who be like yeah, yeah yeah, i'm the reason why that happened it's like no nah, nigga you had nothing to do with that technically right. Right. i i can't say or claim that i have i'm the reason why anything happened except right i was just there part of it part of the collective yeah of course you know, but i don't i can't take credit no where credit but that's due. that's a really great perspective to have is that a true perspective of not having that thing inside you that makes you feel jealous and angry at people right because jealous angry entitled none entitled, of those things yeah. have crossed yeah. my mind being in the situation because I don't think I deserve that right ego right. right you know I'm always just like oh maybe I'm just chilling see even the even the flog not shit is like I remember when those things started happening and it's like I'm very like I just I've always just been kind of like I do the things I want to do and then I want to go home like, have you been to one no I've never been to one because I'm like I'm like, it's just not, I'm like, I will get tired in like a half hour and be like, I can get the fuck out of here. That's just how I am. I'll say for festivals, especially yeah. in LA, most festivals are just shit shows, but ours has been, there's like never a rest, never, it's always safe. Yeah. No like overdose. I've also no aged out. I've aged out of that shit. Like, I get, trust me, I get it. I've, yeah. That's how I feel at Coachella now. I've been going right. to Coachella since we played the first time I was 16. I was still in high school. Like that's. Yeah. Prime. Being in high school, going to prom after like being on TV is crazy. Oh my it's God. It's just dude. like. Come, 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 come yeah. suck my dick. But like, I went to my high school reunion <laughs> just last like, week, nigga, on Saturday. Or wait, what's today? Monday. Monday. Oh, I went on Wednesday, I'm sorry. Because Born Race was Tuesday. Yeah, Born Race was Tuesday. So I went Wednesday. And getting to a high school reunion, now where I am in life, thankfully, it's, it's fucking weird, man. It's fucking weird. Right. Like, everybody's looking at you and they're like, waiting to make eye contact. And you make eye contact, they're like, bro! How you been? What's yeah. been? Bro, I haven't seen you so long. I'm like, I don't know you. Right. I really have no idea who you are. No idea. I was only there for two years. Like, I don't yeah. Yeah. technically have any relationship. And not for nothing, but like you do, your brain has seen, I mean, I'm not saying this in a shitty way, but your brain has had to scan <laughs> hundreds of thousands of more faces than, than those most, people's have. I'm sorry, but like, I know you I will never I, remember you, no <laughs> matter how hard listen, I fucking try. I'll forget Jason's name if I don't see him for two weeks. I swear to fucking Christ. Like, my brain, like my my card is max, and I'm like I haven't seen you know like can we just say listen you're in high school you're on TV you're I mean are you what's going like are you are you fucking are you what, what is happening like are you I started, out of your mind but I lost my virginity at 16 but I didn't start fucking until I was like 18 okay that's when you're like yeah really fucking yeah like, I really, didn't like figure it out yeah, I just yeah. I thought I was still like you know the little homie yeah but once I figured out I was fine. But even then, it's like tour is a different monster, bro. You're yeah. you're really surrounded by grown ass men as a sixteen year old, seventeen year old. You have to just be a good boy, and especially my parents trusted me to do that. Yeah, they never were like overbearing or like you can't do this, you can't go here. It was like very like, do your thing, stay safe, call if you need anything, we'll call you, answer the phone, yada yada. So I thank them for trusting me, but yeah. 
Yeah, I never was like a wild boy on tour. But you weren't experienced. You weren't like I'm gonna. You weren't getting to a point where you're like, you know, I'm gonna abuse this power for because like you no. have a different set. Of, you have a different. I don't want to get in trouble. I was always scared to get in trouble, especially as like the little homie and like the least important one on a tour. You don't right. want to be the one who's like fucking up. I don't want to get there, arrested. Yeah. I don't want to be the reason why everybody else gets arrested. Being right. younger, right? Um, especially being in like Europe, dude. You're in Europe. Yeah. My parents are trusting me to behave in Finland, <laughs> in Amsterdam, and all these places. <laughs> in and it's like, yeah, I just have to. But there must have been times when, like, you must have been like, like, like you're in Europe. I know that some European girls must have like kidnapped you at points in your life. Like, I guarantee that's happened. I like, was a good boy, I know you've been man. assaulted. I was he's a good, he's, wholesome I boy. What, I see what he's doing right here. He's, 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 he's. I see what he's after. I'm a good wholesome he's, man. He's a good wholesome Christian man. Christian boy. He had sex once or twice a year, maybe once, and not life. with anyone that knew who he was. With people, he would find people that had no idea who he was, <laughs> who didn't even speak English, who never heard of music, and he talked to them on a spiritual level. I never. And uh, they would commune spiritually. Well, yeah, it was all. It was all spiritual. It's all spiritual. Always spiritual. Never just wanton nutting in people's <laughs> on people's garments, wiping your dick on curtains. None of that ever happened at random places. It's a twenty one savage morning. song, man. <laughs> no, I like. <laughs> I had my fun. I think though, I was in relationships for a majority of it, so okay. I wasn't wild as I should have been, would have right. been, wanted to be. Right. A lot of that was like me being on Facetime my girlfriend, like being like, "I'm not outside. I'm in the hotel room," you know. Right. Which is like the horny, the horny person, like the the horny, uh, uh, desperate person's thing is like, "Well, you should, you gotta fuck everyone." But the reality is, there's no end to that fucking. Dude, right? people think tour is like a party twenty four seven, but a lot of it is sleeping and eating terrible food so that's you're my really worst, people think nightmare. it's like a shit it's like no nigga no. this shit's kind of trash no. sometimes it's my worst nightmare and majority people think that it's always bad like bro we were uh like technically in my eyes we were like a hardcore group like not physically but just like our crowd was just white kids that want right. to get hurt right there was no cute girls at odd future shows man right. it was right. ugly niggas and ugly niggas like <laughs> that was it everybody was fucking ugly so you're just like <laughs> Everybody's like, yo, you should be fucking all the girls. I'm like, bro, they all look like me. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no. Wow, what a trajectory. It's so crazy. And now you're and now you're working on a um Okay, listen, we're gonna move over to the Patreon where you're <laughs> behind the paywall. Well now he's gonna Taco's gonna cuss a little bit and get dirty and he's gonna talk about all the consensual butt sex. He has <laughs> different people, different all kinds of different ethnicities, sizes, <laughs> races, uh, genders. He's gonna talk about the time where people's three people put their head in the toilet, <laughs> everything. It's all coming out on the paywall. So you got to log in. You got to pay the fee, which we haven't established yet. And I'm going to set it off. Now we can start cussing. Now we fuck shit, sucking dicks, all that shit.